If your Starlink internet service has become less reliable and slower lately, I think I might have found the answer. Check this out. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again. Joining me for tea time today, we have a little bit of fireside. That smokiness, smokiness of that lap song, so good. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a tech day. It is a Starlink day. I've been getting a lot of questions about this just over the last week, I would say, and I found this to be the case myself. And a lot of people are coming to me and saying, listen, you know, the speeds are down. I'm just, things are just less reliable as of late. And I don't know why, what is going on? Well, I think I might've figured this out. All right, bear with me. I wanna give you a little bit of a background first, and I'm gonna tell you what you can check and hopefully fix this problem because I did and it ended up working. So before I get into all this, I wanna say that if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks as of yet, go check them out. Go over to jchristina.com forward slash books. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash books. Also, if you are a Starlink user and you wanna have a dedicated IP address and maybe do some port forwarding, check out PureVPN. Those nice guys over there at PureVPN gave me a discount link that you can use that will provide you with about 82% off. I know it sounds nuts, but yes, 82% off. And not only will you be able to secure your family or your business, but you'll also have that dedicated IP, a static IP address, as well as port forwarding. Basically at the cost of maybe a latte per month. Really, really affordable. Anyways, down in the comment area, as well as in the description, I'll put that link. Go check that out. So anyways, this is what I've found. Let me begin by saying that if you don't know what Starlink is, basically Starlink is an internet service provider now, right? It's an ISP, but instead of terrestrial on the ground, it's in the air. It's basically satellite internet, but with low latency because the satellites are in LEO or low earth orbit in comparison to geocentric type of satellites that are much further away and produce a hell of a lot more latency. They are just simply slower, like you would find with HughesNet or something like that. So very good service, but SpaceX Starlink has been going through their fair share of problems that they've been having to deal with ever since going from beta now to official service. I've been there since the very beginning, about a year and a half now or so, somewhere like that. And at the very beginning, speeds were extremely fast and they have slowly degraded. And I've talked about this in the past. A lot of it has to do with congestion. It's just simply oversold. There's not really two ways about it. For the number of satellites out there, the number of ground stations that are working back and forth in unison is only so much that it can do, all right? And SpaceX is trying to figure this out. The way it works, you have your Starlink antenna or dishy that's sitting on the roof, and it needs to be able to see unobstructed about 100 degrees of the sky. If you're in the Northern Hemisphere, that dish is gonna be pointing towards the North. If you're in the Southern Hemisphere, conversely, your dish is gonna be pointing towards the South. So a lot of folks out there wrongly think that the dish or dishy, or as I call him, Mr. Bevel, has a motor in it so it can move around and track the satellites. It doesn't work that way. The motors only work when it's trying to position itself at the very beginning when it's first starting up. So if you put it into stow mode to stow it away, and now you unstow it, it's going to reacquire the satellites and reposition itself properly. That is it. When the thing is actually operating during the entire time, you can take a plumb string from it and wait a week and you will see that it doesn't move a single millimeter. It stays exactly where it is until it reboots or it repositions due to a firmware update and then a reboot. Or once again, like I said, if you stow it and then unstow it. Now the way it actually tracks satellites or locks in on the satellite basically has to do with frequency shifting. So it has a phase array antenna on it, which is just think about it as a whole bunch of antennas. And then it figures out and triangulates the closest satellite. And that's how it locks in on it through that phase array to the closest satellite or the satellite that is less congested, let's call it. Now, this is not a small feat. People don't understand this, but the satellites in LEO are moving by at about, let's call it 500 kilometers per minute. 
So if you translate this, it's about 300 miles per minute or 18,000 miles per hour. <laughs> so these satellites are moving by pretty quick. So it is amazing it can do what it does. Now, I'm gonna show you two pictures, okay? This picture over here is what my dish used to look like, as I call him, Mr. Bevel. And this is what it looks like now. And this is part of the problem, all right? This is part of the problem, and I'm gonna get into this in just a second. Now, when I looked at this, I'm like, what the heck happened to this dish? The dish has been the exact same way, magnetic north, pointing magnetic north, for a year and a half or something, over a year. It has not moved. But just the other day, I looked up and I saw that the dish is not pointing right. I figured something went wrong. Maybe there was a motor problem or something. So you know me, guys. I had to dig in a little deeper. I'm like, what is going on? The speeds are kind of like in and out, not great. Eh. So I went into the actual debugging information. Now, if you don't know how to do that, just head over to 192.168.100.1. Matter of fact, let me bring this up onto my screen. Let me switch over and I will show you what this looks like. Now, the important information is right here. Do you see right here it says bore site azimuth and bore site elevation, 34 degrees and 59 degrees? Do you see that? This gives you information about direction. Also, you could look right here. It says pop ping latency. Look at that, 35 milliseconds, 36. So there's a lot of debugging information that you can look through here, if you so desire. This information was important, but when I looked at it, it just didn't make sense. It was almost like opposite. The elevation was 60, but I know the elevation isn't 60. The azimuth says 35, but I know it's not 35. Anyways, so what did I do? I grabbed my phone and I said, you know what? Let's go ahead and do this old school. So I pulled out the compass to see where was this aligned to now in comparison to before. Now, before I know I was able to take this compass, look dead magnetic north, and that thing was exact. And maybe instead of zero degrees, it was maybe right around four or five degrees. It was pretty damn close to magnetic north. Well, now the thing is like over here by a bunch. And I'm like, what is going on with that? It is at about 60 or 61 degrees. So that is not where it was before, right? I'm looking at it, I'm like, well, we're, instead of being magnetic north, we're at, let's call it east, northeast. That's where it's pointing. I'm like, well, that's not even close to where it's supposed to be. So then I took a look at the level. It says 35, right, or 60, and I think it was confused, or I don't know. So what did I do? What did you think? I ended up bringing up a level. And I went up there on the 12 foot ladder. And I'm like, all right, we got zero degree. Now let's take a look at where this is at. And it was at about 15 to 17, 18 degrees. So at least I got an idea of what this thing is doing or where it's pointing. It's not pointing in the same direction as it used to be. So I'm like, geez, what the heck is going on here? What is up? It doesn't make any sense. So I'm like, all right, well, it's pointing in a different direction. Now, what am I seeing? Or what is my dish or Mr. Bevel seeing? So I went over to another site. Let me show you this site. This is kind of fun. If you've never been here before, go check it out. It's called Starlink.sx. Well, it's not like an official site from Elon or from SpaceX or anything. It's just a guy who programs. He put it up here for free so you can take a look at it. But anyways, the green dot right here is me. Now, this little triangle is Atlanta, Georgia. Why? Because that's my home pop or point of presence. Now, someone would ask me, well, why are you not connected down here to Miami? That's only 70 miles away in comparison to a pop that's 700 miles away. Well, I don't want to get into it, but now you can see it. When I talk to you guys about this in the future, you'll see why I get upset about this, but Let's just forget about this. But let's look at this green area here. You see all of these like honeycomb? It shows that I'm pointing in this direction if my dish was pointing magnetic north like it was before. Here, we can see satellites that are coming by. These green satellites are version 1.5s. Those are the ones that have lasers built on to be able to do satellite to satellite data communication. Whereas the blue ones here are the version 1.0s that do not have the onboard lasers. So the more of these green dots that you see, 
the better off that we will be. Anyways, back to the story. As you can see, this swath of area is due north. Well, my dish is not pointing due north anymore, magnetic north. So if we come over here to the top and go to simulation settings, and if we change Mr. Bevel's azimuth to what we saw it to be, which is about 60 or 61, let's call it an even 60 and hit done. Now look what has happened. Instead of covering all this area over here, now you see that we're covering into the ocean, like all this area. I was thinking about this a little bit and I'm like, well, why in the heck would SpaceX do this? All right, what would, what would be the purpose behind this? So of course, like I always do, I dig in deeper, right? For you guys to hopefully give you some good information or at least what I think to be why this is happening. And once again, by the end of this video, I'm gonna tell you how to fix it or what could be your problem, why you're seeing outages, more outages and slower speeds. I'll get into that in just a minute. Anyways, I did some digging into some subreddits and I wanted to see what people were saying about this. And I found a guy, he was out of Washington on the other coast. Remember, I'm in Florida, right? And I'm on a peninsula, let's say, in the middle of the ocean, okay, about six, 700 miles. Well, he's in Washington on the West Coast. And what he found was his dish, instead of pointing magnetic north, just like mine was, it is now pointing west, northwest. I'm like, that's interesting, west, northwest. He's once again on the other coast, on the Pacific coast, and now his dish is pointing over the ocean. And I'm like, hmm, that's pretty interesting, right? I started speculating about this a little bit. And I said, you know, how about if it was something like this? We know that SpaceX Starlink is congested. They've oversold it. I don't care how you want to look at it. It's oversold, all right? And it's extremely congested. Well, how about if they were to take the people, coastal people, and point their dishes, their Mr. Bevels, into the ocean, all right? Now, some people would be like, why in the hell would they do that? Well, think about it this way. The people that are landlocked, are using all of the satellites above them and everyone is using those satellites, right? If you're on the coast, all those satellites that are now offshore are not being used by anyone besides a boat or a plane. And there's not that many of those. So if you're able to use, like for myself, satellites that are over the ocean, not many people are using them. The same thing holds true with, let's say, if you're on the West Coast. If they point those satellite dishes towards the ocean, towards the Pacific, they're going to be using satellites that are not being used because, once again, they're in the middle of the ocean. So I was thinking about that. I said, it makes sense, but I'm, I'm speculating here. So I dug in a little bit deeper, and once again, I found within another Reddit, there was someone that was talking about something very similar. And what they did is they wrote into SpaceX Starlink and said, listen, my dish is like all cockeyed now. Is it broken? What's going on? And what they wrote to them is this. Check this out. As we continue to launch satellites and improve our network, an update was rolled out aimed at improving Starlink speed, latency, and overall performance in your area. This change may have caused your Starlink to reorient to the West because your Starlink spends most of its time talking to satellites in this direction. If your Starlink has more obstructions to the West, then you may experience new service dropouts. So they didn't say exactly what I was speculating, but something very similar, because what they're saying is your dish is getting the majority of its service from the West anyways, so now we pointed it to the West. Why could that be? Well, if he's once again on the West Coast and it's pointing into the ocean, and I'm on the East Coast, literally like 50 miles off the coast, and my dish is now pointing into the ocean also in opposite directions, mine the Atlantic Ocean, his the Pacific, that makes damn good sense to me. But also here, also what they said was if your Starlink has more obstructions to the west, for me, it would be to the east, right? You may experience new service dropouts. Dropouts also lower speeds. And that's exactly what damn happened. I have a big ass tree. 
I cut all the trees to the north, which was no problem because it was literally, I was set up due magnetic north and it was fine. Well, now it shifted from zero degrees to like 61 degrees east, northeast. It's a damn big tree. <laughs> Stupid, right? I mean, now, obviously, this is conjecture. I am i don't know. I am speculating as I always do on this channel and try to give you as much information that I can. And that, like I said, there's always much smarter people here than I am. So in the comment area below this video, tell me your thoughts. What do you think? I mean, the problem that I think I've solved here makes sense. All right. It makes sense. Is it the reason? I don't know. But by them doing this reorientation thing that they just did a couple of days ago, if you have slower service or if you're getting a lot of dropouts, check to see where your dish is pointed. It might not be pointed magnetic north anymore. It might be different. And then when you take a look at where it's pointed, see if there's any obstructions. Maybe you're pointing at a damn building now. Or maybe you're pointing at a big ass tree like I was. So anyways, it might be time to break out the chainsaw and start removing some limbs. And that's what's going to happen. For me in Florida, it's not a problem, right? I mean, the weather's going to be like 40 tomorrow or something. But the people up north where it's snowing and freezing and the weather's going to start getting worse and worse and worse, they're not going to get up on the top of a ladder to go cut down a frozen tree, right? They're going to have to wait until spring. That's a problem. That is a big problem. So anyways... This is what I think the problem might be. Once again, in the comment area below, let me know if you think that I'm just lost my mind or do you think that I'm right, wrong, whatever. Are you experiencing slowdowns also? And have you checked your dish lately? That, may, that should be the title of the video. Have you checked your dish lately? Anyways, check that damn dish. See if you're pointing into a wall, into a building, into a tree, into a bush, into something that is obstructing its service, right? Check that out because this might solve your problem. Anyways, guys, if you want to get more Starlink coverage, I made an entire Starlink playlist, bunch of helpful how-tos, tips, tricks, commentary, what to buy, what not to buy, and why. Why is always the most important thing, as I always say on this channel. I like to show you stuff, but not just tell you stuff. I want you to think about it and come back to me. I don't want to be like some talking head here, all right? As I always say, down in the comment area below this video, let's have this discussion. Some of you guys have asked me how you could contribute to the channel, and YouTube was nice enough to provide us with a little thanks button down there. If you want to hit that, you can, but even better, just simply become a member of the channel. That would be awesome. If you enjoyed this video, even in the least, consider giving this video a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel and then clicking this little button over here so when I go live or when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. And I will be going live, I believe, this week. So stay tuned for that. Finally, head over to my website, jakecristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for another vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all.